Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the spinal cord and reflexes. So this is presented by me, Kaushik Chari. I'm currently studying uh, MBBS from Ames, currently in my third year. And you can follow me in an academy using this link. So moving on, the spinal cord is a continuation of the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is a part of the rhombencephalon or the hind brain that I have taught in my previous lesson. And the continuation of the medulla oblongata is known as the spinal cord. And the most important difference between the central, uh, the uh, the brain and the spinal cord is that the neurons in the spinal cord are actually arranged in the opposite way to that of the brain. In the spinal cord, the cell bodies are on the inside and the white matter or the axons are on the outside. So the cell bodies are, appear grey because of presence of lipofuscin and the uh, white matter appears white because of presence of myelin. And the spinal cord runs in the vertebral canal which is protected by the uh, vertebra. Uh, if you recall from your locomotor system that the spinal cord is made up of vertebra which contains, uh, con consists of a vertebral canal and through which the spinal cord runs. So the spinal cord, uh, on the cut section of a spinal cord, you can see that the spinal cord has a dorsal horn and a ventral horn and uh, the dorsal horn contains the dorsal root ganglion which is basically a collection of cell bodies, collection of cell bodies. So the neurons in the dorsal root ganglion are an example of which type of a neuron. Uh, so if you recall, recall from the previous lessons, the dorsal root ganglion is a pseudo unipolar neuron because it gives rise to a single process which divides into two. So the spinal cord. Uh, it gives rise to 31 spinal nerves so the spinal cord also has divisions just like your vertebra now uh, just like your spine now uh, it is divided into cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal and from the cervical we have eight nerves from the thoracic we have 12 nerves from the lumbar we have five nerves from the sacral five nerves and one coccygeal nerve overall making it 31 spinal nerves and the spinal nerves are mixed that means they contain both sensory and motor information so the reflex coming on to the reflex the reflex is an involuntary response to a stimulus that requires no conscious effort or thought so if you have ever touched a hot object and suddenly withdrawn your hand just suddenly withdraw your hand involuntarily so that is what is a reflex if you close your eyes suddenly when the dust falls in your eyes that is also a reflex and knee jerk what is a knee jerk basically in knee jerk when we strike the tendon around of the muscles around the knee the impulse is carried to the spinal cord and the reflex action is set into motion in which the muscles contract and the knee moves forward. So this is known as the knee jerk reflex. So moving on the two types of reflexes one is the monosynaptic reflex and the polysynaptic reflex. So based on the number of synapses that is involved in a reflex it is divided into monosynaptic and polysynaptic. So I will also sh uh, I will talk about this much more detail in this diagram over here if you see if you can see this is the diagram of a knee jerk. So basically if you give a stimulus to the muscle around the knee muscle around the knee the impulse is carried by this blue nerve fiber which is the nerve fiber of the dorsal root ganglion into the spinal cord this is the dorsal horn of the spinal cord so the information is carried from here to the dorsal root ganglion <coughs> from here the information moves across this single synapse as you can see this is a single synapse to the motor neuron and the information from the spinal cord moves to the muscle that it has to contract so when you give a stimulus this stimulus is carried to the spinal cord across this single synapse over here to the next motor neuron and the information from the motor neuron is carried to the muscle and it tells the muscle to contract. So in this entire pathway, this entire pathway is known as a reflex arc, it's known as a reflex arc and in the reflex, reflex arc you can see that there is only a single synapse. So this is known as a monosynaptic reflex. Now whereas another one that is given as an example that is drawn as an example here is that the if the information goes through from here and it crosses this a synapse enters this neuron which is known as the interneuron and there is another synapse between the interneuron and the motor neuron. So there are two synapses here in this reflex arc. So this is known as a bisynaptic reflex more correctly as a polysynaptic reflex. So that is the difference between a monosynaptic and a polysynaptic reflex. Now if you see the spinal cord this has a dorsal dorsal uh, horn and a ventral horn. So this is the ventral side and this is the dorsal side. This is the dorsal horn. This is the ventral horn. This is the central grey matter. This is the surrounding white matter. So that's this is the, actually a transverse section of the spinal cord. A transverse section 
द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड इज कट ट्रांसवर्सली एंड यू कैन सी दैट द डॉसल हॉर्न बेसिकली इज कैरिंग द अफरेंट अफरेंट नर्व अफरेंट आर द सेंसरी नर्व दैट ब्रिंग इन इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द पेरीफ्री टू द सेंटर एंड द वेंट्रल हॉर्न कैरीज द इफरेंट नर्व द इफरेंट नर्व आर बेसिकली द नर्व दैट कैरी इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल नर्व सिस्टम टू द पेरीफ्री सो बेसिकली the nerve fibers of the dorsal and the ventral horn combine together to form a spinal nerve so this is a spinal nerve so basically you can see that the spinal nerve has both the sensory as well as the motor components as thus it is called a mixed nerve so just revising this lesson once again so the spinal cord is a continuation of the medulla oblongata the arrangement of neurons as i have shown you in the diagram both gray and white it runs in the vertebral canal so i have shown you the dorsal root has sensory nerves the ventral has the motor nerves and the dorsal root ganglion is a pseudo unipolar neuron the spinal cord gives rise to 31 spinal nerves that what you have to remember and the spinal nerves are mixed nerves and have both sensory and motor components so the reflex is an involuntary uh, response to a stimulus that requires no conscious effort so that's how that's what i have shown you in this uh, next diagram that the monosynaptic and the polysynaptic i have shown you the difference between these two that they involve this involves only a single synapse between the neurons whereas polysynaptic involves more than one synapse so and uh, one more point that i want to add over here is that the meninges that i've talked about the about in the brain the meninges actually extend even along the spinal cord so the spinal cord is also covered by the meninges all the three meninges the dura mater the pi uh, the arachnoid mater and the pia mater and the csf the csf also flows all around the spinal cord between the subarachnoid matter as well as the uh, pia mater so it is important to remember that the csf is also present around the spinal cord and the meninges are also present about the spinal cord so that's it about the spinal cord and the reflexes in short and uh, the take home message from this would be that you should remember the structure of the spinal cord you should remember that the spinal cord gives 31 pairs of spinal nerves and you should also remember that the neurons how the neurons are arranged in the spinal cord and the spinal nerves are mixed in nature and what is a reflex and what is a polysynaptic and what is a monosynaptic reflex thank you for watching and that's it for this